straight across uh, to Rishabh Gulati, editor-in-chief, uh, who is joining us live. Rishabh, uh, tell us a bit about this interview, uh, where Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to you, uh, how the conversation was, uh, the context of uh, where he was speaking with you. Uh, it was also after the fifth phase of voting, Rishabh. Yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, we did the interview in Patna. Uh, we got a, a finality on this on Sunday, and we flew out Monday morning. Interview was set up for Monday evening, uh, 8 p.m. It was, I think, we had the time slot 8 p.m. We started 8:20. Remember, the p.m. on that day we were watching, of course, I had a rally at 8 in the morning. So it was a consideration and, of course, a conversation that he's been. I think he was in uh, Jagannath Puri before that. That he's been up since six in the morning. Uh, will he be able to make it? Yes, he did. Uh, and we met him at the, what was the end of a long day. Uh, his body language was pretty well sorted. He met us very well before the beginning. Uh, he answered all the questions that we, we, we put to him. He was very blunt. Uh, and afterwards, he chatted with us. We took some, we took some photographs. Uh, and then he was going to Raj Bhavan, where he had more meetings as he was spending the night in Patna. And now, as you know, he's in Kashi, uh, where he's been doing uh, today that uh, Samilin uh, with women. So it, uh, uh, it was... The, the team that was operating uh, to you know, accommodate this, very professional, very on spot, they're very particular about uh, things being done properly, about things being done on time, uh, and uh, no nonsense approach. Uh, so they, it happened very smoothly. They were very cooperative when our camera team was petting, setting up. They gave them several hours to set up. They literally emptied out whatever uh, furniture from the office was required. They, they set up the entire place. Uh, including putting up the plaster boards at the BJP office in Patna? yeah at the BJP office okay. so all the all the where you're seeing the interview taking place this was that was a conference room they emptied out the entire conference room they they gave us full access uh, for almost eight hours that you set it up the way you want uh, we of course had to go through security checks as well and get security passes made uh, so all in all it was uh, it was uh, a pretty smooth and pretty professionally organized uh, organized exercise that happened timely uh, he even though he had a long day he didn't seem to be in a rush. Uh, even when uh, towards the end he was happy to stay on for a couple of more minutes to take a few more questions. So it went off well. Absolutely. Uh, now we of course would want to know, Rishab, uh, what do you believe were the main takeaways of Prime Minister Modi's exclusive conversation with Newsx? What were the big news points uh, and, the, and the main talking points of what the Prime Minister told you? Look, we're going to let the PM speak for himself on exactly what he said and intended to say. And you're going to hear that. Uh, but let's break it down on the larger conversation that this is being set in the last phases now of the election. Okay, This is no longer about the Congress saying appeasement in the name of secularism. This is about the Congress economic ideology being seen in total, in full, to suggest that when you say redistribution of income, who do you intend to take it from? And who do you intend to give it to? And the juxtaposition of the conversation of the BJP at the highest levels now, okay, we've interviewed the Prime Minister, the Finance Minister, the Foreign Minister, they are saying that you put the puzzle pieces together. Manmohan Singh says Muslims in this country should have the first access to all resources. Now they say they intend to take away your wealth, so they'll take it and give it. So they'll take intentionally then from Hindus and give it to Muslims. Now that's the conversation that seems to be set. The second part of the conversation is not that secularism was something of appeasement, but in fact secularism was something that was said in order to actually practice communalism. Now practice communalism then against whom? Then against Hindus. Why the Ram Mandir could not be built immediately after independence? Why was it that reform did not happen in Muslim communities, in education, in personal law. Why was it that minority education institutions were allowed, but in places where Hindus are a minority, for example in Kashmir, they were never allowed? Why was uh, special powers given to the Waqf board still today, okay, that don't apply necessarily uh, uh, to, to Hindus? So in terms of discrimination on the grounds of religion, the conversation is not just about who appeased who. The conversation is, did communalization happen? And the simple point is that if you say Vande Mataram, you say Jai Shri Ram, you know, I was mentioning this, uh, I'm a Punjabi, you say Satriya Kal, that's completely normal. That's how you say hello. Okay, Salaam Alaikum, Allah Akbar, this is completely no normal. If you go around India, saying Ram Ram is completely normal. That's how people say hello. But now then to think twice that I'm a Hindu, then, you know, should I say it? Then what will people around me think if I say Jai Shri Ram? 
this is the reversal. The third point, Uday, is, uh, which is the big takeaway clearly from this, is in a conversation that is happening in the country on jobs, the PM has mentioned something uh, in a report that has come from a think tank, which says that, look, you have to look and compute the number of man hours. So entire conversation on jobs is pivoting on projects that are developing man hours, on startups, on unicorns, versus a central government job guarantee sort of scheme. Now remember, that the PM has already given 10 lakh central government vacancies have been filled. But the Congress, of course, says we'll give 30 lakhs. The next question of, and point of takeaway was that if 25 crore people have come out of poverty, the question then arises, why do 80 crore people then still need free grain? And we asked this to the Prime Minister. He said in the past, when grain was rotting in the godown, and this question was asked, we were told we can't distribute it. I have proved it that you can distribute it. And people who come out of poverty are the ones who need the support so they don't slip back into poverty. That's, the, that's a big takeaway. And the final and most important takeaway is on what we were discussing, and we spent half an hour discussing this, 100% uh, saturation, that discrimination does not happen if everybody gets the scheme. If only some people are getting the scheme, then you have to have these long debates. And he's been very upfront. And this is probably the only point in this entire interview and uh, in many things that are debated in politics where there is no debate. No opposition parties. Nobody says that in 10 years as prime minister or 15 plus years as chief minister that a Narendra Modi-led government discriminated against any community when it came to government scheme. So that's the overall picture of that. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, Rishabh, stay on with us uh, because uh, let me quickly uh, bring in uh, Devika Chopra also onto the discussion. Uh, uh, Devika, to quickly now, uh, before we you know, explore some of the big takeaways and the big points and play out also some excerpts, uh, you know, so Rishabh told us about how they got the interview, uh, you know, what the main points, of course, of the interview was, where it was done, uh, what happened next? The footage came. Uh, how, how long did it take you for it to be produced, edited and ready for play out? Uh, Uday, we've been at it for about 72 hours now. We got some confirmation because of course this was a big interview so not everybody was in the know-how the entire time. But we got some hint 72 hours prior to the interview that uh, something big is about to happen and all of you need to be now mentally prepared for it. Uh, Sunday evening we get some sort of an inclination and we just begin work uh, just knowing that tomorrow night at some point the Prime Minister of the country will be sitting down with us uh, for this interview and of course uh, uh, you know uh, then all of our e editors fly out for the interview and uh, we've actually spent the last 48 hours just working on creating the best possible experience for our viewers, ensuring that uh, you get a very seamless experience as far as watching the interview is concerned. It's available on multiple streaming platforms. You can watch it, of course, on the television, but we've ensured that you can also watch it on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. It will be accessible on all big platforms as soon as the clock hits 9 p.m. tonight. So we've ensured that uh, everything that we could do to make sure that uh, the Prime Minister's voice and his message and of course our crucial questions to him reach the people, we've done that. And like I said, there's been a big team that's been involved, there's been a big production team, there's a full graphics team that has been working for the past 48 hours in creating literally everything viewers you see on our screens today and of course on social media And in as fact, well. as we speak, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, official page has also put out the interview uh, he's also put out a big uh, poster on their official page because people will be able to see it simulcast on the official uh, Narendra Modi uh, social media page as well. So that's also another avenue to see it. Megha Sharma, let me uh, quickly bring you in here also on the buzz now uh, for the interview as well. Because certain, you know, big takeaways and excerpts were the most important aspects of what the Prime Minister said. We've attempted to debate and discuss those as well as it did Megha through the day today. In fact, the PM, interestingly, also on camera had urged NewsX to have a discussion on the Scotch report findings, uh, which is something that we've done earlier in the day as well. Also, through social media, a lot of buzz has been created for this interview. The nation is clearly excited for it to clock 9 p.m. Megha. Oh, absolutely. The nation is excited. And, uh, you know, I was privy to actually watching the interview, listening to it, and a lot of those talking points. And he was talking about the Scotch report. And that's interesting because up until now, there has been the opposition. 
that continues to attack the prime minister, continues to attack the government of India, that what are the figures, what are the statistics when it comes to the number of jobs that you have created, the employment opportunities that you have generated. And here's Prime Minister Narendra Modi talking about the Scotch report. Now, this is a think tank that is based out of New Delhi. And it has made quite the revelations. It has calculated the person hours, the person year hours is what the Prime Minister speaks about. And we'll discuss this uh, in detail. And we've already talked about it a little bit. And, and how this equates into creating jobs, which is 51 crore on an average generative employment in the country. So, so that's one strong point as a counter that was brought forth by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. I don't know if he has spoken about this previously in any of his interviews or the speeches that he makes or the public addresses that he goes about speaking. But that was something that was interesting. That is also then you coming about and thinking that, oh, okay, this is interesting. You have the number of roads that have been built up, thousands and thousands of kilometers of roads that have been built up. You have the mobile towers, you have electrification, you have the mudra loans, you have the Swanidhi Yojanas, and all these things help in building the businesses and the businesses help up building the job. So, so that was an interesting aspect of it all. And uh, I, I'll, of course, uh, encourage my viewers to go uh, stay on NewsX and, and at 9 p.m. Uh, that yes. will be a big revelatory. Let me uh, bring you in here as well uh, uh, on uh, what you believe stood out in this interview. What's the most interesting aspect for you, uh, Vineet, in this interview today? Well, uh... Well, first of all, I think uh, the Prime Minister wore his heart on his sleeve and, you know, he basically drove home a point that, you know, no politician in a mass democracy can really succeed in coming up with a perfect algorithm, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, of public appeal or develop a composite profile that satisfies all constituencies. What you can do is do your best. But what I liked is, uh, you know, when he spoke about uh, the contractual appeasement uh, which is ma mentioned in the Congress manifesto, and that is something which is alarming. And he also used the word, which he really uses, which is pagalpan, which is insanity. If that kind of an appeasement and if that mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, you know a situation is uh, presented or even talked about legally by the Congress party, uh, and he also in more than uh, you know more more than uh, a lot of words went on to say that politics of appeasement. Uh, pr promotes separatism, it's, uh, it, it promotes radicalism, it's backwardness at the cost of national interest and integration. Uh, and he also, you know, mentioned what is actually wrong with the Congress party. He said that uh, the Congress party has basically vitiated the social and the political environment of India for nearly 100 years now. Uh, and this is something which the BJP Absolutely. is enjoying and thriving on today. And that was something that the Congress party could have done very easily. Yes. You know, the, the philosophy is something that can save the world, Uday, uh, if you look at what's happening all around you, you know, and that's exactly what uh, India stands for. And that is what Prime Minister Modi represents. And that's exactly what came out in this interview today. Okay. Uh, and, and even, you know, one more point, uh, you know, if, if you look at uh, the uh, uh, partition also, you know, it, it could have been a very peaceful uh, transfer of population. Okay. Congress leadership had shown patience and fortitude, uh, but it turned into, you know, a macabre dance of death, you know, because they refused. Right. To Stay with us, Vineet. In fact, uh, let's play out a couple of sound bites as well. We've referred in our conversation already to what the Prime Minister said on this 100% saturation debate, believing that this is the real Sabka Saat Sabka Vikas. Let's play out that excerpt. We'll also play out the excerpt of where Prime Minister Modi speaks on the Scotch report findings, which is also something that my colleague was referring to earlier. मेरे दो सिद्धांत हैं एक 100% सैचुरेशन अगर मान लीजिए गरीब को घर देना है तो भी कुकड़ों में मत करो 100% सोचो जब 100% होता है तो फिर भेदभाव कहां आता है भाई कोच का रिपोर्ट पड़ा होगा और मैं चाहता हूं कि आपका टीवी चैनल ने कोच के रिपोर्ट पर डिटेल में स्टडी करना चाहिए और टीवी डिबेट करना चाहिए उन्होंने सरकार के कोई 20-22 स्कीम का डिटेल एनालिसिस दिया है और कितने परसन यर अवर इस देश में उपलब्ध हुए इसका पूरा आंकड़ा है Joy Tabasu was also uh, live with us uh, from our Sunday Guardian team, which of course will also be carrying uh, uh, this interview. It's a big uh, ITV network exclusive. It's also going to be something that the uh, Sunday Guardian readers are going to be looking forward to uh, this Sunday, Joyta. Uh, but uh, for you, what, what stood out 
uh, in the interview, what's the most interesting aspect of what the Prime Minister has spoken about? Uh, you see, whenever the Prime Minister speaks, it is not just the most interesting aspect. Almost everything that he speaks is interesting. So, for example, I really found it, in fact, very interesting. I would say very amusing also when he says the opposition leaders, the people who badmouth him, they do it for the sake of publicity and then they climb. They think that is how they will be climbing up the ladder of their political career. What is very, very important is that when he is talking about, as Rishabh also uh, pointed out earlier, that, you know, it is actually, you have to redefine in terms of what secularism is and what communalism is. You know, I mean, certain parties have got away all these years by calling themselves secular when actually what they were doing is that when they have been pursuing communalism. So what he was actually talking about was this appeasement. And even now, even now, if you look at what these people are doing, when he's talking about the Muslim uh, appeasement that this other Manmohan Singh in particular was practicing about, I mean, if he is going to talk about it, how does he get communal? How does he become communal when he Manmohan Singh actually said this? You know, it is now that the Congress is trying to say that, no, these things were never said by Manmohan Singh, but the videos are there. I myself have been uh, writing about it for years now. So th then he went in this Scotch report that you're talking about and these schemes. You see, this whole halabaloo about, you know, which the opposition has been trying to make joblessness into a big issue. And um, in fact, if you talk to the voters, Two uh, narratives are working. The minute the voter says development, you know which way the voter is kind of headed. And the minute they are talking about joblessness, they, you know which way they are thinking. So you see, that is yes. a All huge right. narrative okay. he's countering. What was the biggest takeaway? What was the, what was the biggest takeaway that you want people to watch out for? Well, I would definitely uh, think in terms of the joblessness part. Okay, joblessness. The, the, the scotch conversation with Uday is just high. Mega, what is the biggest takeaway? In a, in a parting note, the Prime Minister spoke about how there is a realization that he has that it is not the political parties who are fighting the elections, it is the people on the ground, the public no, who not, is not fighting, fighting the, the election. election. That and and, and the they election, are yes. the ones who are, who are, it is their desire on the basis of which the results are going to be announced. So, so you know, I think that was a very uh, significant uh, moment and the thing that he spoke okay. was, was, was uh, uh, insightful. Okay, Devika, what is, what is your takeaway from all of this? Quite interestingly, Rishabh, and I don't think uh, we really touched upon this aspect, but when he was talking about uh, the fact that Congress wants to now give reservations in a contractual system as well, in the same breath, he continued on and he said that, listen, this is madness because this is the time for India and Indians to work really hard. We've mm -hmm. achieved a lot okay. in the past 10 years and I think that was a very important okay, because, message. Because a few things are happening, right? What What is happening here? And let me, let me get Vineet in on this. Vineet, what is obviously happening is that the Prime Minister is is not only setting up because this interview is happening at, at the end of the fifth phase of, of voting and there are just two phases left. We are a week or 10 days away from results. Now he's setting up the conversation for the last two phases and of course he's setting up the conversation for his potential return. Right, absolutely. And he's being very pragmatic about it. He's actually, you know, in a way telling the opposition that the uh, agendas that you have picked up against me are in fact backward and uh, regressive in nature and then only go on to cement that uh, what the Prime Minister has been able to achieve in the last 10 years is something that the Congress party was not able to do in 75 years. So in fact, okay. uh, you know, he's uh, said it with a very subtle tone and tonality and tenor, which drove home the point. Okay. In fact, we can play that out. Yeah, yeah. just, we'll listen, just listen, yes. listen to this. I want to listen to the secularism uh, by uh, the, the sort of snippet also for once, please. Let's play out the nakab, a soundbite of the Prime Minister, where the PM, of course, speaks about this nakab of secularism that he claims that parties have been practicing earlier. Lekin unke jo narrative banane wale hai, ve unki baat ko chupa dete hai, aur mere mu se musalman sabda nikla to wo le communal. Main un communal political parties ke liye bol raha hu, jinhone सेक्युलरिज्म का नकाब पहन करके गौर सांप्रदायिकता की है गौर सांप्रदायिकता की है so that was what the Prime Minister said, of course, uh, on that, uh, on, on the appeasement versus secularism debate. Interestingly, Rishabh, one aspect, though, we haven't spoken about yet is the first question you asked Prime Minister Narendra Modi. You know, we've seen earlier, too, when opposition leaders make personal remarks on yeah. him, it often boomerangs. But we've seen that continue this time around as well. 
Rishabh, no, what is the PMC? Well. I think I answered it. Joyita Joyita brought this up, right? Uh, this has become instructive for people who, people who know who are in, in and around politicians. You know that now politicians who want to make it big, they have these consultants, these advisors, okay, PR, media advisors, and, they, and they'll tell you, and they'll tell you, the more obnoxious you are, the more dramabas you do, the more insane thing that you say, the more you will make an impact. I want you to think of, you know, some some content creator parking their bike in the middle of the road and blocking traffic to make make a video. Uh, this is the same mentality, and I think the I think Jyotir the PM nailed it. He said they do it because then then the rest of us are saying, oh ha, look at how he's talking about Narendra Modi, and they get infamy. And Uday, I just want to add something there, Rishabh. As you've pointed out, I think there was a message for the media as well by the Prime Minister because he said that listen, somebody comes and abuses me, and that person gets half one an hour, hour or one hour, hour of so air don't time. Do, so do solutions oriented really journalism here, yes. instead there's of drama, drama, for drama, us drama, well. drama journalism. Make, let me get bring mega mega in this. No, absolutely, of course. And, and you know, another point that was uh, very strongly put forth by the Prime Minister was that the opposition, while sitting in the opposition, has not done any constructive work. He said, he's not, they've not taken up, they've not even gotten the gumption of picking up these serious issues. So, what is it that uh, this disunited, disintegrated opposition is all yeah. about? Yeah, but the op opposition can debate that and, and that's where the con conversation is ending. So, you know, as we, as we wrap up and, you know, continue the conversation on the other other side mm -hmm. with uh, our colleagues uh, from the network. Uh, this is, of course, Team NewsX from the network who are part of this interview interview process. But, Jaita, quick, quick last thought from you. On the on the tone and tenor that that the PM is 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 setting, uh, we've seen this in election cycle now fructify. It began with uh, you know the Modi guarantee. Uh, it has gone through uh, the election in the south. It is now distilled into the elections in the north, and now we have a pretty straight ideological fight which is devolved into. Well, if you're looking at it, the most, I would say, important thing that he's talking about throughout, it, it's about the people. It is about the people's election. They are taking over. And however much you want to stop me, meaning the opposition, it is the people who are, I mean, I am under the protection of the people. They will ensure that I am through and home. Yeah, he, uh, he, he seemed confident now. Yes. He seemed confident on the logic that, uh, that, uh, that was a projection of confidence. Or he's actually, he seemed pretty relaxed. He seemed to be in yes. control. Uh, and that's practical. Okay. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.